The News Run on Off The Ball with Gillette. Put your best face forward with our new and improved razors. This is News Talk. Now you're welcome along. Tuesday's Off The Ball. It's Joe here. Dan McDonnell is with us for the football show between 9 and 10. Rob Harris will also join us. Rob has been following the Newcastle owner's story over the past few days and these are interesting times, I think it's fair to say. So Rob will join us around half past nine or so. This hour, Mick Foley of the Sunday Times on the line. Special Congress is obviously happening on Saturday. It does seem increasingly as if the much heralded, celebrated proposal B won't get the required 60%. So we'll get mixed take on how the last couple of weeks have unfolded. And then after eight, John Cochran's a sprint coach. He's worked with inter-county GAA teams, Olympic gold medalists across the past 20 years. He will chat to us about speed in all sports. And Chantel Jennings from The Athletic on a fairy tale finale to the Women's NBA Championship. 53106, the text number. We are out of the ball on Twitter. Richie McCormick, hello. Hey Joe. And Willow Callahan with us. Hello, Will. Joe, Richie, how are you getting on? Champions League evening as well, I should mention. Liverpool in action against Atletico. Manchester City already an hour into their game against Bruges, where Kevin De Bruyne in front of, uh, I'm sure, an enthralled Belgian audience has watched their boy play a beautiful pass through for Kyle Walker to make it 3 0 Man City. And so they are home and hosed already with half an hour to go. Uh, decent evenings fair ahead in the Champions League, Will, not least in Madrid. Yeah, Atletico against Liverpool, definitely the game of the night. Um, Atletico Madrid have been much improved since the first international break. They've hit their stride uh, within La Liga. Really good result for them in the Champions League game away from home against AC Milan when they got a very late winner scored from the penalty spot by Luis Suarez. So Liverpool are going to have to deal with one of their best former players of the last decade or so tonight. Anton Griezmann coming back into the Atletico Madrid setup too has bolstered their attack and while in recent years it's all been about Atletico Madrid stopping their opponents going to the Wanda and playing any football in front of them. They also now have a little bit more going forward than perhaps they had the last season or two. And Atletico are looking pretty decent in the Liga currently, despite the odd slip-up along the way. It's a, a tight race in the Liga so far where nobody seems to want to take absolute control. And we've got the Clásico this weekend uh, with Real Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, but it's going to be a tough nut for Liverpool to crack. But if Liverpool can win, it puts them in an extremely strong position in the group, having been impressive in their first two games. And that is the game probably to watch in Europe tonight. We'll be talking with Mick Foley this hour of the Sunday Times about special Congress. Not so much just to uh, LA fears because Lord knows no one wants to hear any more tweaking to propose systems, but just to get his sense of the last couple of weeks because it has been quite striking. The nature of the debate, Will, it's unusual in some respects that GA uh, throw it out and say, well, discuss that amongst yourselves. And so the media largely seem to conduct the debate, which is always a bit random and unbalanced and certain areas are amplified and others aren't. And Things like the finances, there's confusion there where a member of the task force says on OTBAM there'll be 10 million extra and then GA finance department come out and say, well, that's not actually true. And just kind of this uh, vacuum. And I would say where we are now, the wind is blowing towards status quo, I think. I think so. Uh, I think it's unlikely at this stage, although four days is a long time in politics, that the required 60% would be met for Proposal B to be in place uh, for next season, albeit that the championship is due for reform at the end of next season anyway. And I wonder if this doesn't get passed, whether some of the counties who have already openly come out, the fact that four and five players say they want to change to the status quo with the championship that we have currently, if reforms might be baked into whatever the championship is going to look like beyond 2022. We are in, Joe, at this stage, the very final uh, part of the process, which is really... We've got three or four county boards who've come out openly and spoken about their intentions to vote. Uh, we know that three of them now have declared that all of their delegates will be voting in favour of Proposal B for this weekend. That is Clare, Westmead and Offaly. It emerged this morning that Leash are leaving a free vote for their delegates for this weekend after their county board meeting, which took place last night. And the reasoning that Leash have done so is that they believe there could well be amendments to Proposal A or B before it meets the Clare floor at the weekend on Saturday. Saturday lunchtime at the Special Congress. So yeah. I think watch this space that potentially there could be changes made to proposal A or B uh, before it even gets voted on this weekend. I believe that there's going to be a meeting of Ulster chairman this evening with the Ulster CEO and secretary Brian McAvoy. And in all likelihood, Ulster could vote on block for this weekend. And I think if the nine Ulster counties plus the provincial councils and say some members of central council were to vote against the idea of proposal B, 
it's probably dead on arrival before it hits the claw mm. at the weekend. So it's right. going to be very interesting to see how those Ulster counties are going to vote after they speak later on this evening. Well, that possibility of some last minute amendments obviously is very interesting. I would presume the one that jumps to mind because the big complaint has been that the provincial championships, I guess if you can even call them championships, the provincial round robin competition in the first part of the year, the complaint is, well, these will just wither and become pre-season events and teams won't play their best teams. Uh, one of the potential uh, solutions to that is you somehow give points towards the winners of the provincial championships, which apply to the league aspect of the championship. Now, others have said, well, why, you know, you're still just favouring the big teams, but um, at least it would incentivise the provincial tournament early in the year. Who knows? It doesn't sound like Ulster are too keen either way. So we'll wait and see over the next few days. Mick Foley with us half past seven. Uh, we should get into the news, Ren Richie. It is, as ever, with thanks to Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razors. We had a COVID briefing this afternoon. Yeah, uh, and while the arts sector is withering on the vine uh, after today's announcement, outdoor sporting events will be allowed to operate at full capacity from this Friday. It follows the government's announcement this afternoon and 50,000 fans will be permitted for the Republic of Ireland's World Cup qualifier with Portugal at the Aviva on November 11th. While this Friday's FAI Cup semi-finals at both Dynamite Park and Richmond Park can double their capacities and all three, of course, of Ireland's Autumn Rugby Internationals can also welcome full houses. OK, great. Well, 50,000 for the Portugal game <coughs> will be great. Lots of people will be rushing to watch Ronaldo. We'll uh, discuss Ronaldo a bit on the football show. He does seem to be increasingly just a problem for Manchester United. Michael Cox from The Athletic was writing about the Ronaldo problem and it's a complicated piece and he takes a real tactical look at the many, many ways in which Ronaldo's efforts, quote-unquote efforts, are not exactly helping Manchester United when they don't have the ball. Uh, for instance, uh, just to start, we can all get our heads around pressing actions per 90 minutes of players who've placed uh, a certain number of games. So Michael Cox has looked at this. Uh, pressing actions per 90 minutes. Top of the table, most pressing actions per 90 minutes. Wilfred Zaha with 20 per 90 minutes. Diogo Jada is 19.8. Aubameyang, 14 times a match. He'll uh, initiate and follow through in a pressing action. Salah, a respectable 12. In fairness, the man's busy being the best player in the world right now, so 12 is fine. Mane, 10.5. Bottom of the table. Not second bottom, not third bottom. Bottom of the table, Ronaldo, 2.7 times he'll make an effort to uh, press. So uh, Wilfred is doing 20 a match and then Ronaldo, 2.7 times Richie, he'll yeah. reluctantly look over at Mason Greenwood and say, oh, uh, we really should press here. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's get this out of the way. It's my one per half. Yeah, it, it, like it's a problem we saw coming um, mm. because it's one that we highlighted at Juventus uh, prior to him moving there. And essentially, I think uh, it was, was it Miguel Delaney said that increasingly there he'd become a piece of heavy artillery that's wheeled into place for, you know, a certain designed move and will, you know, often finish it off. But you're depending on him an awful lot to have to finish that off and everything else suffers because of it. And that's where Manchester United find themselves now is that everything is being done to serve Cristiano Ronaldo. And if you're not able to feed him, then he's not going to score. And if he's not going to score, then the team as a whole probably isn't going to score. And they're leaving themselves open to concede because they've got uh, two centre-backs at the moment who have all the pace of coastal erosion. So um, it's a bit of a mess they find themselves in. And uh, I don't think it's one that's going to be solved while Ronaldo is there or while Solskjaer is there either. No, it's a real mess. So we'll chat a bit more about that on the football show. Dan McDonnell in between 9 and 10. Speaking of the football, I mentioned Man City. They're cruising 3-0 against uh, Bruges. In fact, they have just yeah. scored a fourth Manchester City. So they've gone 4-0 uh, up now. Yeah, and they'd uh, just taken off Kevin De Bruyne to, uh, to widespread applause, as you mentioned there, uh, in Bruges at the moment. As I mentioned, Club Brook at nil, Manchester City 4. Uh, Joao Cancelo opened the scoring. Riyad Mahrez doubled their advantage from the penalty spot. Uh, Kyle Walker, aided by Kevin De Bruyne, added a third. And City have just scored a fourth there. In the past few moments, this game is home and indeed hosed. And a good result for City against uh, what had been up until tonight one of the surprise packages in Group A it is that substitute Cole Palmer who scored their fourth tonight Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp says they're coming up against a results machine tonight they've made the trip to the Wanda Metropolitano for a Group B clash with Atletico Madrid Alisson returns in goal for Liverpool tonight in one of a couple of changes from Saturday's victory Trent Alexander-Arnold Joel Matip and Virgil van Dijk and Andy Robertson are their back four in midfield then we've got James Milner Jordan Henderson and Naby Keita Fabinho is good enough for a place on the bench Mo Salah 
Roberto Firmino and Sadio Mane start up front in a three-man attack. For Atletico, it's Jan Oblak in goal, a back three of Felipe, Jeffrey Condogbia and Mario Hermoso. Kieran Trippier and Yannick Carrasco provide the width. In midfield, we've got Thomas Lamar, Koke and Rodrigo de Paul. And then up front, it's Joao Felix in support of Antoine Griezmann. And Luis Suarez against his former club is on the bench tonight. Kickoff is at eight o'clock. Yes, yeah, Suarez coming back from injury. I'm sure we'll see him some <coughs> stage. Uh, I do take uh, Klopp's point that they're a winning machine. At the same time, they are only fourth in La Liga, Will. So uh, it's uh, slightly different maybe to the dynamic in 2020 last time they met, of course. Yeah, and look, Liverpool probably would have won that game two years ago when they were knocked out in the game that kind of fell either side of the pandemic if it hadn't been for Adrian being in goal because... He doesn't make the mistakes that gives Marcus Llorente a couple of soft goals at Anfield. They would have knocked Atletico Madrid out. And look, Liverpool have gone to Madrid. They've played two teams from the capital, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid, in the last couple of seasons and been knocked out um, with those fixtures. Liverpool are still going to come out of this group without any particular problem. But given some of the teams that are potentially going to finish up in second place, if you want to top the group, they need to get a positive result here against Atletico Madrid. And the OSME on his side are going to make them work extremely hard to do so. Although you can see and I was listening to Graham Hunter talking about Atletico the La Liga commentator this morning that Atletico are slowly but surely shifting system as the season goes on and the team that Richie has just named out is incredibly attacking by their standards mm. in that you're expecting Carrasco to play effectively as a left wing back Thomas Lamar will give him a bit of cover over on that left hand side but they've got three attackers who are probably not going to do a massive amount of pressing tonight uh, particularly Griezmann and Joe Felix and they're just allowing um, to, a lot of attackers to go onto the pitch compared to what Atletico used to do once upon a time. Like in recent seasons, we've been used to them having one pivotal number nine and then playing a lot of players retreated back against the bigger teams. Yeah. And I'm intrigued to see how attacking Atletico will be in practice. Did you refer to Graham Hunter there as La Liga commentator? Yeah, he works for La Liga TV now. Surely Graham Hunter needs no introduction in these parts. He's just Graham Probably Hunter. Probably not. It's like Will O'Callaghan, Graham, Graham Hunter. Friend of the show. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. We, don't, we don't need that. Uh, Jimmy bit pedantic Jimmy I'll be rushing to watch my national team's new youthful and refreshing style under a good manager I couldn't give a toss about Ronaldo Jimmy allow a man a radio segue into a Ronaldo discussion come on let's uh, a bit more compassion towards each other the only thing the GA bigwigs love more than Gareth Brooks is the status quo uh, says Dan disappointed in uh, leadership in Ulster I mean they do love Gareth Brooks they do love status quo it is disappointing, really. Uh, Mick Foley's on the way. He doesn't think, Richie, like this is a case of, well, if this doesn't get through, it could be five more years until another proposal no. goes before Congress. He does at least think that such is the call for change now and such is the general acceptance that something has to happen, that if this is rejected, there will be something else on the table, say, next year. So there won't be that grim sense of, oh, God, it's another five years till we get a crack at this. You know, it's not like uh, losing the presidency. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be doing a, a montage to the tune of Scorpion's Winds of Change uh, soon enough regarding this. Like, there is something coming as regards it. Like, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, Mick Reynolds, the Leinster GA secretary, highlighting that it is within the purview of uh, provincial, um, what you call it, county, or provincial boards to alter how their championships are played. So there is the scope to increase the number of games for so-called lesser counties by introducing round-robin affairs into the likes of Leinster or perhaps into Ulster as well if they wanted to, although I'm not sure they do. Uh, but Munster and Connacht, I think, would definitely benefit from that. So there is a sense that things are going to head in the right direction, but there is going to need to be a little bit of a, a big picture towards this because like that thing of, of wondering if, if the provincials have just become pre-season competitions, um, like, yeah, like how many games do you want amateur athletes to actually play and to be working themselves towards and how much of the calendar year do you want them working a full pelt? Because again like it's either an amateur sport or it's not yeah you know and that that does, that discussion needs to enter in, into this as well like you can't flog them for an entire year just because certain competitions have tradition mm. you need to take everybody's be uh, benefit and well-being and the competition's benefit and well-being into account yeah uh, before making these decisions yeah like personally i i do think that the likelihood despite you know certain players saying it won't happen i do think the likelihood is that the that provincial competition would become effectively pre-season tune-up wouldn't see yeah, the best players and, and would sort of so, so be would it. Would be facetious so what if it does? Like, yeah, like, no, that would be my sense as well. It might be, a, might be a price worth paying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're being genuine now but I just think the reality is that's how it would go. Now, sorry, before the clock comes against us, Davey Fitzgerald, the man likes to keep us on our toes. He does indeed, yeah. Uh, David Fitzgerald is poised. He won't like that, by the way, the height differential. Uh, David Fitzgerald is poised to be named the new goalie senior hurling manager. It is reported, 
uh, the former Clare Wexford and Waterford boss will be confirmed as Shane O'Neill's sec- successor even tomorrow night. Uh, Fitzgerald left the Wexford job in the summer after five years at the helm. He will be assisted, it seems, by a Clare heavy backroom team, including a former Galway coach in Louis McQueen. He worked under Gerlach Nan during his spell there. Uh, staying in Galway, Keane O'Neill last night added to Porrie Joyce's coaching staff with the senior footballers. The former Kildare boss served as a similar capacity, in a similar capacity, with the Cork footballers under Ronan McCarthy for the past two years. So, Will, we have Galway hurling, high profile, never dull. We have Dave Fitzgerald, high profile, never dull. This is a marriage made in heaven. Whoever wants to get in and start writing the book on this now, it's going to be an interesting couple of years. Yeah, put in the added factor that potentially you could have Davy Fitzgerald trying to get Joe Canning, who he has managed previously, to come back out of retirement to play for the Galway Hurlers next year. So did a little bit of digging on this earlier because I was a bit surprised when the first rumours started circulating this morning about Davy Fitzgerald being an imminent appointment for Galway because it would appear behind the scenes that there's been all sorts of conversations happening about the Galway job over the last particularly three to four weeks and it seemed at one point that Michal Donoghue was going to be a real runner to come back in for a second spell in charge and then those talks fell down and at that point it looked like they were going to go potentially uh, towards promoting Brian Hanley, the former Westmead manager and the guy has been doing a great job with his uh, Galway underage teams in recent years right up to the top job. And then this Davy Fitzgerald rumour comes around. What made me kind of sceptical about it, Joe, is that Saoirse Bolfin, who has worked as the hurling coach for Davy Fitzgerald for the last 11, 12 years, had last week taken the coaching job in Meath under Nick Weir. And I thought the minute he took that job, that was a strong indication that Davy Fitzgerald was not going to take an inter-county job for the 2022 season. I took it with a bit of salt when he spoke to Clare FM back in early September. And when Davy said, ah, no, lads, I don't think I'm going in for a job. I think I need a year off. I think if the right job came around and Galway would be a very prominent position that David Fitzgerald would be interested in doing so. The big question is, is David Fitzgerald the guy that you want to be there for? What's going to be a little bit of a rebuild for Galway over the next couple of seasons? Albeit they still have some players who are around from 2017. The difference maker is if you get Joe Canning to come back out of retirement, things look a little bit different than what it would look like for Galway when they had such a disappointing championship campaign after an impressive start to the league this year where genuinely some people saw them as a contender to Limerick to win the All-Ireland title. Mm. There's a text in from Dave in Leash who questions the Sal of the world's best player. There's more to football than the Premier League. Lewandowski, Muller, Kimmich, Donnarumma to name just a few, Dave and Leash. Three Bayern players. <laughs> Donnarumma, the PSG sub-goalkeeper. Yeah. I, I think, um, well, Lewandowski is massively underrated. I think on current form, Sal is just about the world's best player. I think he'd be close to first name on most team sheets at the moment. Don't think it's that controversial. Lewandowski should have won it last year, Joe. If yeah, the Ballon have. d'Or hadn't been postponed, he would have won it last season. Yeah. Like he's still banging in tons of goals this year. But just look at Mo Salah over the last couple of weekends, his performance last week, albeit against the Watford team who down tools pretty quickly. But the way he played against Man City, that finish on his right foot as well. Yeah. Sal is the form player in the world right now. Yeah. Look, Karen you can't you can't right there, by the way. Kareem Benzema he does absolutely yeah. yeah 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 you can't please everyone that's what we're learning Dave and Leash who is the best player in the world you text that in then we'll pick holes in that that's maybe the easier way everybody for this to text work. in yeah. 30 cents ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so well that's the GA so Dave Fitzgerald that's interesting news at Galway uh, Leash senior football manager announced yeah, Billy Sheehan last night ratified as the new Leash senior football manager. He takes over from another Kerry native in McQuirk. And meanwhile, Leash delegates will have a free vote regarding the proposals facing special Congress on Saturday. Former GEA president John Horn has given his backing to proposal B, saying he'd like to see it given a two-year trial from 2023. According to the Mayo News this evening, delegates in the county are unlikely to support proposal B. They'd sought input from the clubs over the past few weeks regarding their views on the matter. And speaking to the football show today, Derry manager Rory Gallagher voiced his displeasure with the league as championship format. I think there's two things you can win, um, you know, you know, as a, as a young GA player, a provincial championship and an All-Ireland. And people are saying, you know, some of the arguments are that uh, our teams have no realistic chance of winning All-Ireland. That's not going to change no matter what. So it's not, you know, the Premiership can only be won by two or three teams. There's not, there's hardly going to be a, 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 a foreign, pe- a foreign just the way Newcastle were taking over. Somebody's not going to take over. Waterford Gaelic footballers are not going to take over Fermanagh Gaelic footballers from there and finance them. I think still in Fermanagh, you've a dream of winning a provincial championship, and to take that away would be totally wrong. I, now, I the, the provincials still would exist. The only thing they're taking away is the, is the link between the link. It, they'd be glorified challenge games. Yeah, so that's Rory Gallagher and his view, and increasingly, I think uh, it seems to be going that way. 
barring uh, some big intervention over the next couple of days. Still nothing from the GA hierarchy as such. Rich, do you want to give us one last quick story? Uh, yeah, elsewhere, uh, Ali Gunnar Solskjaer obviously uh, defending his corner uh, following comments from uh, Jamie Carragher overnight as well. Uh, but also news regarding uh, Newcastle because the Premier League clubs have voted to impose a temporary ban on any of them signing commercial and sponsorship deals with businesses that are linked to their owners. Funny enough that concerns have been raised about Newcastle using its way to get around financial fair play rules using their Saudi back takeover. Newcastle voted against the freeze while surprise, surprise, Manchester City abstained. <laughs> <laughs> we we couldn't possibly comment say uh, Man City <laughs> fellas we are done thank you very much Richie McCormick cheers nice one Willow Callahan thank you Joe very quick one for you on the GA hierarchy oh. they are speaking tomorrow Tom Oof. Ryan the most uh, powerful man in the GA even more powerful than the president as they're always straight ahead will speak at noon tomorrow and Larry McCarthy will also speak tomorrow they've got their Congress briefing at noon ah. and OTB will be along to cover it okay interesting very good Will thanks a million cheers lads on the 4th of October 2021, the OTB AM programme incorrectly reported that Mr Jack O'Connor had been selected by the county board to the role of Kerry football manager prior to the commencement of the formal selection process and had been given guarantees that he would be appointed before the formal selection process undertaken by Kerry County Board had been concluded. We accept that those statements were groundless, false and incorrect and caused distress to the Kerry County Board and to the five members of the subcommittee. We acknowledge that Mr O'Connor was not selected or appointed to the role until the conclusion of a thorough selection process. We apologise unreservedly for the distress and upset caused to the Kerry County Board and to the five members of the subcommittee appointed to select the Kerry football manager. At the request of the Kerry County Board, a donation has been made from OTB to Recovery Haven Kerry, which is a cancer support charity in Kerry. The News Round on Off The Ball with Gillette. Put your best face forward with our new and improved razors. Right, that's it. Just one more bet and I'm done. I haven't got a problem. Sure, it's only scratch cards. Everyone does it. It's hard to take that first step and admit you have a gambling problem. At Helplink, we offer a free gambling addiction.